So let me show you what I did for one of the repositories that I'm currently working on. This here is an end-to-end -end machine learning system. There is a lot going on here and running it on any computer that is not this one is super painful. There are systems I need to set up, environment variables that I need to create, tools that I need to install. It's a lot and I've been dealing with this for a long time. So I was in class a few weeks ago and I'm talking to my students and telling them that I really need to find a way to help them install this system in an easier way. I don't want them to spend a ton of time dealing with tools and systems and configs. I want to basically take the time that it takes going from cloning the repo to running the system. I want to take that time and squeeze it as much as possible. I want to get rid of this gap here. Now, of course, I knew I needed some sort of like Docker container to do all of this and then it hit me. That's what development containers are for. The solution for this has existed forever. Here is an explanation on how to use development containers in Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna leave a link down below if you want to go deeper into this topic, but here is a 10,000 foot view of how development containers work and how you can use them. First, you need the Dev Containers Visual Studio Code extension and Docker. Of course, you need to have Docker installed on your computer. This extension works on Visual Studio Code. It works on Cursor, that's the one I'm using. It works on Windsor, like anything that's based on code that will support the extension. If you are the type of developer that prefers something like JetBrains, you're fine because JetBrains also supports the development container specification. So dev containers also work there. Pretty much any decent IDE will support development containers. I have that specification here and here is what it says. Actually, this is the opening line and I'm rephrasing it a little bit. It says the purpose of this specification is to provide a simple way to develop develop inside a container. That's exactly what I need. The second step is to create a dev container.json file inside your project. Here is my file. Here I specify the Docker file that will define my environment. Here is the Docker file where I can just go and prepare that environment. I can install tools like, I don't know, SQLite 3 or Just or UV or the AWS CLI, anything I want want to configure for that environment, I can do in this file. In the definition of my container, I can also specify the ports that I want to forward with my local computer. So now if I access port 5000 from my local computer, that will be mapped to the internal container. I can also set environment variables that I want to initialize here. And this is cool. I can also specify the set of extensions that I want Visual Studio Code to automatically install. So anyone using this container, when they run their project inside this container, their Visual Studio Code will automatically install all of these extensions. That's super awesome. Now there is a lot more that you can configure here. The ultimate goal is to allow people to just open your repo, click a button and have everything configured for them automatically. The final step is to build that container and connect to it using your IDE. Now, this is the easy part. Whenever you try to open a repository that contains a dev container.json file, Visual Studio Code will automatically ask you if you want to open the repo inside that container. So you click that button and Visual Studio Code will create a container for you and will open the repo inside that container. So you don't need to do anything else. When that's done, Everything you do will happen inside that container, not on your computer. So you can go and install tools, delete things, and nothing will be reflected on your computer. You will maintain, you will keep full isolation between the container and the rest of your computer, which is great. And on top of that, anyone can literally click a button and get a fully configured setup to run the system on their computers. If you're working on a team, this is gold. If you're 
working alone, if you don't work as part of a team, but you switch computers, let's say between your office computer and your home computer, this is also awesome. This is gonna be very helpful. I implemented this and now every one of my students is using development containers and the number of issues, the number of headaches is down to zero because now everyone clicks a button and they're working on exactly the same system that I built for them. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. If you've used dev containers before, leave your best tips and tricks in the comments below. Stay awesome, keep building cool things, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.